Going from the side hustle season to becoming a full-time content creator does not happen by accident. It takes strategy and planning. And in today's episode, we're jumping into part two of our how to become a full-time YouTube creator. And Sean Cannell is gonna be breaking down two critical steps to actually going full-time. Like, What does it take when you are in a season of life where your schedule doesn't align with your goals? We're gonna be covering that and more on today's episode of the Think Marketing Podcast. My name is Heather Torres and I am your host. And if you're new here, we deliver a brand new podcast every Tuesday. So make sure you subscribe wherever you're listening to this content right now. And I'm excited because today's episode is part two of this three-part series. If you missed part one, make sure you go back and listen to that here on the podcast and then jump back in here on part two. But let's do a little recap first. Part one, we talked all about starting and skilling up. Now, I love what Sean said about starting. He said, success on YouTube is found when you use your experience, passion, and skills to add real value to the lives of others. You've got to start before you're ready, but you don't want to just create content for content's sake. You want to make sure you're creating content that brings value to other people. Step number two was skilling up. You want to master your topic. You want to get better than you were yesterday, become obsessed with your subject, and invest in yourself. Learning those hard and soft skills are critical for your development when it comes to becoming a full-time content creator. And in today's episode, we're jumping into step number three and four. Step number three is synergizing your schedule. What does it look like when you have dreams and goals, but your calendar isn't lining up with that? And how do you create smart systems? I am all about systems, and I'm going to talk about that after Sean's training here on the podcast. All right, step three synergize your schedule, synergize your schedule, synergize your schedule means this aligning your jobs, hobbies, volunteering, and free time with your end goal. So if you have an end goal full time on YouTube, creating a living from your passion, turning your creativity into a career, profiting from your passion, If you know that's your target, then you'll get there quicker if you try to position yourself in a job and if your hobbies are this, and let me know in the comments, is this your hobby? I mean, I'm sure. I I know you're probably as passionate about YouTube as me. So maybe YouTube is your hobby. That's a good thing, right? Because then your hobby is also like this thing you're doing on the side. So if your job is leveling you up and your hobbies are moving you towards your gear uh, goal and you're volunteering somewhere and that's moving you towards your goal and you're taking your free time. And by the way, this might seem hardcore, but hey, you're here and it's, this is, you know, it's one point of view, but I am a firm believer in extreme sacrifice for a short period of time so that you can experience success for the rest of your life. I heard Dave Ramsey put it this way, live today like no one else so that later in life you can live like no one else. I'm experiencing that right now. Why? Because of this. It's hardcore. I, but my hobbies, my jobs, my volunteering, it was all a light. So, so I was on like this fast track because I, I was just like, I know that this is like the North Star. Like somehow I'm going to be full time on YouTube. I'm going to figure this stuff out. Let me try to stack everything. Because again, it, it, and if this is out of your control... It's out of your control. If certain parts of your schedule are unchangeable, then they're unchangeable. But I'm talking about what you can control, what you can influence, right? It's a power principle right there. So this introduces us to the proximity principle. Now, my friend Ken Coleman just dropped this new book, but here's the principle, and I highly recommend it. I'll link it up in the YouTube description. It's it's a book about the proven strategy that will lead to the career you love. But here is what the proximity principle is. Finding opportunities to do what you love is as simple as getting around the right people and being in the right places, okay? So the gist of the book and the proximity principle itself is saying, okay, where do I wanna go in my life? And once you've defined that, and maybe it's just one target full-time on YouTube, okay, what people then and places, what people could I put myself around, which could happen through podcasts, YouTube videos, books, that is one way because you're getting around them. You're getting their thinking, their mindset. But if you can actually get around them by volunteering, by working for them or whatever, 
And then what places, like what environments or events or, or volunteer, if you get around the right people and places, boom, it just accelerates you into that desired end goal that you're going for. And so remember the 2000 jobs and 10 jobs and pro, uh, projects, Red Robin, by the way, not so much the prox, not so much the synergy. I had to pay the bills. And what I loved about Red Robin was I found one vehicle where I could work three days and I worked Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And I worked 10 to 12 hour shifts. And I only worked three days a week and I doubled all those shifts and I stacked all that money so I could do church stuff Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday and YouTube. So everything we were everything we're doing here was kind of split. It was like three days at Red Robin, double shifts, about 32 hours a week, and then hustling on my side hustle. Clear vision, media, my business, making some money from that. But to be honest, I just reinvested a lot of it. Like you probably do. As soon as I would make money in my business, I'd be like, oh crap, I'm, I'm gonna get this gear, I'm gonna get this lighting. You know what I mean? And, and because I knew Red Robin was covering this, making a little money from my side hustle, this is a, I didn't write this one down. When I started making money from my side hustle, I reinvested it back into my side hustle. If I made money from my business or affiliate marketing early on, I invested it back into books or into gear or into travel. Or, you see what I'm saying? And so uh, these, these projects, though, they all align. They have this common theme of video, leadership, business, right? And so I was doing my best to align all of those things together. So here's five quick areas where the proximity principle changed my life. Volunteering, I told you about that. Number two is starting an interview show. Because Jeff and I started an interview show back in 2010, we started getting around high-level people. And I won't go into, there's a lot of stories I could go deep into and maybe, let me know if you'd like this to be like a series or some other things. But one of the people we interviewed was named Dr. Dave Martin, who again, proximity principle. He was somebody doing something I wanted to do one day. He was speaking on stages. He was writing books. He was creating courses and training materials. And so I, because of that interview show, not only did I get around him at first, but then like, no joke, like one, two years later, I saw him at an event and then like said, hey, someday I would love to like work for you. And he's like, okay, whatever. And then like another year passed. I saw him in another event and then I was like, look, let me, I can help you with YouTube and blah, blah, blah. And it, it worked out. And eventually he was a side client. In addition to everything else, I was trying to do side freelance projects that would get me closer to my goal. Get me around somebody that would level me up because he's teaching leadership and he's doing what I want to do in my future, the proximity principle. And now I'm also in proximity to his content. I'm editing his videos. I'm getting wisdom. I'm getting knowledge. And I'm getting, see, and I and I didn't even care how much money he paid me because it was the level up, man. He didn't actually pay me that good. I mean, and I didn't demand more, but like I was just, I was doing uh, freelance social media on the side for him. But guess what? I'm learning about Facebook. I'm learning what content works, what doesn't. I'm testing different headlines. I'm getting to level myself up and make money from it and get around somebody that is completely shifting and transforming my life. It came because of starting an interview show. And I'd say that even to this day, video influencers, man, it, it majorly exploded and blew up our brand. And that one did as well. In fact, it led to another job, another career, exactly what Ken Coleman teaches in his book, The Proximity Principle, from getting around movers, shakers, the ambitious, people that don't have excuses, people that are not critical. You got to get away from people that are just negative and just critical. I mean, it's not going to help you go full-time on YouTube, just pessimistic, pulling you back, holding you down. And, 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 and some of those people are family members, so you still got to spend time with them. And some of those are your best friend and you still love them. But are you spending enough time around positive people and people that are going to level you up and move you forward? It's a major life-changing principle. The third thing is freelancing in your niche. So I, I wanted to take on clients and people that would help me learn more about YouTube. So again, I never would do it for very much of a fee. I probably always charged a little bit too le too little, but look, it was that it was short. I didn't care about the money, man. I think it was a little short sighted to worry about now money. Like I would rather make baby money now so I can make big money in 10 years, if that makes sense. And so why I wanted the skills, I wanted to level up. And so freelancing for Dr. Dave, by the way, I met Benji Travis in our small town 
because we started Think International and Jeff Moore started it and we met at the YMCA and then I found out his wife did YouTube and then I filmed their engagement video. He texted me a couple days later and he's like, yo, uh, I know we just met because we just met at the YMCA in like 2010, but I'm going to propose to my girlfriend, Judy, could you help me film it? Yeah. You know, and he paid me like 50 bucks. And I came over and I filmed it. And then out of that, we did a wedding series together. And fast forward, now we have video influencers and a book together. But it all started from starting an interview show, getting out there. Now I'm, I'm getting to freelance for them. And they're saying, oh, by the way, I've been putting in work in YouTube. I knew YouTube stuff. I knew uh, ranking and titling by this time and SEO because I'd been studying. I'd been investing in myself. And so I'm now freelancing for them. And that's you know, kind of the rest is history as well. So these are some major areas where the proximity principle changed my life. Number four is work for free. I know people sometimes hate on that. I guess the results, you know, where it's worked for me. So I encourage, don't be short-sighted about money now. That's why get your money right in just some kind of job that you, that you're okay with. Like find your Red Robin, the burger place I worked at. Find that place. Because I was like, cool, if I can just kind of pay my bills with this and live lean, then all the stuff that I want to do, I can level up and get the experience over here. And so I did a lot of work for free. A lot of the work I would get for like a Dr. Dave or some other people started with some free work to get their attention. And then moving to Las Vegas. Now, you might have limitations, I'm sure, just like all of us on, on moving. And the reason I moved to Las Vegas from Seattle, an hour north from our uh, small town called Marysville, Washington, I moved to Las Vegas because I got a job working for a mega church and I'd, I'd been working in a tiny church and now I was working for a church about 2,500 people. So that leveled me up to a whole nother level. But here's what I learned was just like they say in real estate, location, 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 man, the prox like your location can be a major needle mover. Now this, this, I don't want this to make you like, yeah, but like my family's rooted here, you know? Uh, you got to move to LA to be successful on YouTube. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying, are your dreams, are you serious enough about your dreams that you would be willing to relocate yourself? I've heard stories of like, there's a guy named Grant Cardone who's now built over $1.2 billion in real estate holdings. And his kind of number two guy, I think the vice president of his company is named Jared Glant. And Jared literally flew from like California to Miami slept on an air mattress and bootstrapped for Grant, but hey, a couple years later and his whole life's changed. Sometimes it's a radical shock. It's taking a major move. I'm also not guaranteeing that's gonna like lead to success or not, but what I am saying is location matters. And sometimes changing your location, if not permanently, getting out of your environment is just a major key. Why? Get around people and places, the proximity principle. When I moved to Vegas, it was a whole nother level because I also got into an environment of greater pressure, bigger church, more responsibility, more things. But I was also around the lead pastor. Again, proximity principle was an international speaker, author. I helped him write and launch books, getting ready for launching my own. I got to travel with him a little bit. I got to sit and hear him communicate in sermons every Sunday. And guess what that did for me as a communicator? It leveled me up. Proximity principle. I, I mean, majorly, I got to speak a few times there and then I got to get feedback after. What did that do? Level me up. You know what I'm saying? So like, how do I get confidence on the proximity principle? This is just personal for me. Volunteer, start an interview show, freelance in your niche, work for free, moving to Las Vegas. All of these things helped me get around people and in places that majorly leveled me up. Which brings us to step four, which is smart systems. When you're in the side hustle season and you want to get to the full-time season, well, the full-time season is kind of a dream because you're like, well, I'm full-time. I can devote my whole time to it. But right where most of us are now, right, watching, is in that side hustle season and juggling 42 other things while trying to bootstrap and make this work. The only way I've learned to do it is smart systems. And here's what I mean. In 2011, we moved to Las Vegas. And I mentioned that. And here was kind of the 2011 to 2014 jobs and pro projects. I'm full-time. I have a full-time job as a church communications director. I'm doing freelance projects. Eventually, I'm doing some stuff for Dr. Dave. I still flew back, shot Benji and Judy's wedding. Benji uh, and I 
this is way before video influencers, but he would, from time to time, we would work on uh, some brand deals and I would film some stuff if it was needed fancy production. And my family was in Seattle, so I could always visit my family and make it a work trip too. And, and as I went into my position, by the way, because I had some pre-existing brands, I negotiated even into that kind of contract. I said, look, I'm going to crush it and do my best and, and, and really deliver value here, but it's, I'm passionate about freedom. And it was nice. You can't always negotiate that, but I was nice because as I was getting into that job, I had some pre-existing things. I brought it up from the start. So it gave me a little bit of margin for freelance projects. Not even much though. I'm still doing them in my spare time, but, um, and then it was YouTube as a side hustle. So by the time I'm freelancing for others and I have a full-time job and I'm trying to do YouTube, you get it. It's, it's hard. It's really tough. You're like, you're running your, you know, circles trying to do all the different things. And so here's a few tips, batch producing content. I'm not going to go into that here. We'll link some videos in the description about it. You've heard us talk about batch producing content. It's don't just shoot one video, shoot four at a time if you can, and then release one, one a week for uh, four weeks. And there's a month's worth of content captured in one day, right? And so people go, well, how do I batch if I vlog? You don't just don't, don't vlog. Like do something like, I mean, you have to build this thing around your life. Like if you always say, how can I, and there's some sort of impossibility, we rework your strategy. So create a like almost template, create a show on YouTube that is sustainable. Makes sense. I heard it said once that the problem with an unsustainable pace is that it's unsustainable, right? And so like a sustainable pace is like, okay, so to do this, and I'm going to give you some tips on this, but create literally a plan to say, if I only got 10 hours a week to do YouTube, then here's what I'm going to do in those 10 hours. Have you define that? Figure out how much time a week do you have to do YouTube? In fact, tell me right now in the chat, how much time do you have? Get real honest and maybe chicken scratch it out. Like if you're really honest, how much time per week do you have to devote to your YouTube channel? Some of us, you know, you might be on here, you're a single mom and you're like, not a lot. That's okay. Just be realistic about it and take those five hours that you're doing after when the kids go to sleep and be relentlessly protective of them to work on your YouTube channel, you know, um, define, just get clear on how much time you have plant-based ads one to two hours a day is the time I'm putting into this. That, oh, that's great. A day. That's awesome. And, and, and that makes sense. I mean, you maybe get home instead of doing X, you in leisure stuff, you work on your side hustle. I love it. One hour. Is that one hour? Maybe I didn't say uh, a week. So 20 hours devoted. So Gwen, that's amazing. So I would take that 20 hours and then think, okay, what exactly am I doing in this? Um, you know, Harsh Show is 15 hours every day. Dude, you got 15 hours. You can deploy so much hustle against that 16 hours a day. Some people are saying. You know, so we're kind of all over, but please define it because we do ultimately need to be realistic about this, right? And then ranking videos. Now I'll mention this a little bit later, but we've talked a lot about ranking videos. That's when you type in a search term, best camera for YouTube. And on the other side of the search term, a video shows up. And if that's your video, then you get views while you snooze. The most important aspect, I believe, of Getting to full time is creating leverage. What do I mean by leverage? Creating things that will work for you when you're not working. So a ranked video is that. If you don't have much time, but you can put out a video that will get views for weeks, months, and years to come, then while I'm at my job and while I'm freelancing, while I'm doing other things, then my YouTube channel is growing and making forward progress, even if it's slow because of ranked videos. So that was another one. We'll touch on that a little more later. And then also be realistic and embrace life's seasons. So I really mean that. Like, don't be too hard on yourself if you're like, well, I'm full-time at university and I have 15 kids and I have 14 family members living at my house and 16 jobs. How, why can't I find time for YouTube? Probably because of what I just, you know what I'm saying? Like, so you really need to be, re be realistic and realize Life seasons are different, okay? And so um, a mistake I made though, and it's a major mistake, and I see, I see it as like a pandemic amongst entrepreneurs and creatives, and it's this. Doing too many side projects, including YouTube channels at once. 
So when I have this full-time job and I'm freelancing, we were still doing Think International. Not a lot, but every once in a while, we would go to a conference, shoot some more content. I was uploading stuff on my Sean Thinks channel, which is like not even a thing right now. But like we daily vlogged for a while. I mean, again, I was getting a lot of experience. My wife and I about killed myself. We daily vlogged for almost 50 days, like in the midst of all this. But when we did that, there was no Think Media videos. When we did that, there was no Think International. I was spread too thin by, by doing too many things. Clear Vision Media, I was still doing some projects there. And then Think Media got a video here and there. This is no joke. I had four like YouTube channels right around 2011, 12. And there was kind of no wonder why any of them weren't really taking off. Because if you try and ch if you try and chase four rabbits, you'll end up catching none of them. And so these things uh, were kind of going everywhere. Now, it was helping me skill up, but it was also causing me a lot of stress. And so what I would encourage you, I see this all the time. I really don't think you should be working on two YouTube channels, especially three or four. And I also don't think you should be trying to grow a YouTube channel if you want to go full time on YouTube while also like podcasting at some major level and then you also are trying to keep your blog up and you're also like doing a bunch of stuff on your website and working on random projects because I was doing all kinds of random stuff like just trying to make stuff work but I just wasted so much energy and time when you are in the side hustle season you got to be sniper focused on what you're doing so if I could do it all over here's what I would do I would focus on one YouTube channel I would upload one valuable video a week and I would do that by doing batching, okay? So I would, I, would, I would be more focused on like, this is how busy my season is. I needed to sit down and record four videos. And in hindsight, it would have been Think Media. It was the strongest brand. And I was kind of bl blind to that because it where people wanted the video tips. But again, I was pulled in all these other directions because of projects I started. I'll be honest with you, I'm good at starting things. I'm actually, I really struggle with stopping things. You know, one of the reasons why Think International, I kind of kept it going with Jeff, even though I was in a season where I probably shouldn't have, was because I had put my blood, my sweat, my tears into it, and it was just kind of hard to let it go. But to be honest, you may need to let some things go right now so that you could focus on what matters most to you. The analogy in, in um, nature is pruning. Sometimes you got to prune the tree, which is painful, cutting off things you're doing, cutting off projects, maybe cutting off relationships. I don't mean in a rude way, but like you just can't, if you're giving your time and your energy away to everybody else and everything else, then how can you get momentum on your YouTube channel to hit your goal of going full time? Sometimes you got to prune, but when you prune back, it's painful at first and it actually is almost like, shoot, now I got less, but it creates the infrastructure for you, for that life, that plant to flourish, that tree to grow bigger and better than ever before. And so getting really clear, focusing on one YouTube channel, uploading one valuable video a week, only using social media to support my YouTube channel when starting. Not trying to like, oh, social media expert says IGTV's hot. Well, cool, and it is, and I'm pumped about it, and like it's getting more views now because it's in the news feed, but you can't do freaking everything when you're in your side hustle. So I would use social media to support my YouTube channel, but I'd be focused all on that YouTube channel. See, I was like trying to dabble everywhere, and if you're, if you're dabbling everywhere, then you're dominating nowhere, right? And so then I'd also cut out distractions, cut out just little fringy things and get hyper-focused, if I could do it all over, because here's the good news. I'm telling you this journey of 2010 to basically now and this path to full time. Friend, I think you can get there way faster. Our commitment here at Think Media is our mission is to help 10,000 people create a full time living doing what they love and making a difference using online video. And we've had tons of stories already of people that are doing that, whether they've been going through our content or our uh, like academies, like our video ranking academy or these different things. And, um, and so our passion and belief is that while we don't believe in overnight success, we really believe we can shave 75% off of your journey. Like my journey, which actually starts in 2003, is all of this pain and weird roads and distractions and doing way too many projects. I'm here. That's what this training is about, is, is so you could go further faster. And, and so if you were to take 75% off of a 10-year journey, it's still going to take like two and a half years. I just want to shoot straight with you. Some of us, 
we'll go faster. Some of us, it's gonna take three or four or five years. Some it's gonna take seven, but no matter what, like if you were set on your goal, how worth it is you? Like how worth it is it to you? Like you get obsessed to say like, I will until, and maybe there's a light bulb for some of you that's like, shoot, man, Sean's got like a couple other YouTube channels that didn't work out and he was willing to prune to focus on the YouTube channels that are working now. Thank God for the experience I learned on those other channels, but I had to let them go, maybe reposition myself out of a different niche, reposition myself, focus on one thing, and that might be a key for you to breaking through and finally building the momentum you want on YouTube. And so here's a great reason why Think Media didn't start growing until it did. And by the way, YouTube analytics is a little sketchy in the uploads. I definitely uploaded videos between 2010 and 2013, which is what you see over here. They just don't register in old analytics for some reason. But here's the gist. When did all this blue and Think Media start to blow up and grow to over 800,000 subscribers? When did that happen? It happened when I started uploading videos. <laughs> like, I mean, it's a, that's what the graph shows. It's like, uh, if you want to succeed on YouTube, you got to upload videos on YouTube. Thank you, everybody. Have a great night. You know what I mean? But I mean, like, that's like so true uh, that that's what you ultimately have to do. And you can see it that when I got consistent and started posting, it started to go up, go up, go up, go up. And so in hindsight, I'm like, dang, I knew a lot about you. I'm helping other people grow their channels. I'm doing a lot of other things, but I'd spread myself so thin. It delayed my progress massively. And so when I started posting videos on YouTube, that's when the results came. Remember, focus stands for follow one course until successful. Get clear, get focused, niche down, and follow one course until successful. Hey, if you're getting value out of this video, can you smash the like button? Tyler, thanks for the super chat. Hey, Gerald, thanks for the super chat. Marie, thanks for the super chat. Focus, follow one course until successful, okay? And so you might be doing too much. You probably are. Even in your side hustle, your side hustle time is so precious. A lot of you said I got five hours. I got like one hour, you know, a day. I got like 10 or 15 hours. You got to get sniper on the time you have to be focused on the just minimum effective dose and then deploy that. And that's how you're going to get to full time faster. Well, that was step number three and four, synergizing your schedule and creating smart systems and thinking about what it's like to work for free. That's actually how I got started here at Think Media. You know, it's really important to me to give value before asking for value. And what that looked like for me was I had been in a season where I had been working with different small businesses. I actually had my own digital agency at the time, but I knew I needed to get into video. So I sent Sean a tweet when my family and I moved to the same location where he lived. And I said, Hey, I've got some skills. I know you understand video. I'd love to learn from you. And I would love to intern. Yep. That's right. I started working here at think as an intern. I brought the skills that I had, the experience that I had, but instead of asking for monetary value, I decided to just give without expectation. Now it worked out because in our meeting that Sean and I had, he said, hey, I love all the things you're doing. I can't pay you. But as an entrepreneur, I knew that I wanted to be a part of this mission. I saw that he had big vision and big goals. And I knew that my vision could fit with inside that. And so I started working for free. I did months of free work for Sean and we developed our first academy, which is Video Ranking Academy. Through that, we actually did a profit sharing. So instead of paying me up front, he just started paying me when we started making money. And it's worked out since then. Now I'm the host of the Think Marketing Podcast and we've built a whole team around us, but it wouldn't have happened if I didn't step out and work for free. So when you think about synergizing your schedule, when you think about getting in the room in proximity of the right people, really think about what's the value you can give? What skills do you have or what things can you offer and bring to the table? That's something I challenge you with. If you're not yet in the role that you wanna be in, how can you get there? Who can you get around? What podcast can you be listening to like this one? What books can you be reading? What people can you surround yourself with? You know, I think about other people on the Think Media team here at Think, they started as interns because they believed in what we were doing. So proximity principle, it works. I am a living testament to saying that it works. And when you think about those smart systems, man, 
If you don't know my story, I am a homeschooling mom of three kids, two middle schoolers and one elementary school. And I do this full time. So not only do I homeschool, but I also create content here for Think, as well as having a homeschool channel. Now, how do you do smart systems in a season where you may not be able to devote as much time? I think it's really important if you are in a season where you don't feel like you have time that you actually start to evaluate it. One of the practices that I did was for every 15 minutes of the day, I wrote down what I was doing. I did this for a whole week so I could actually see what I was spending my time on. You know what's embarrassing? I was spending a lot of time on social media, on Instagram, reading blogs, doing the work, but not actually doing the work. And so when I started to see what was on my calendar, I was able to then start to block out the right amount of time that I needed. I would write scripts after the kids went to bed, or I would work on client work in the morning before they woke up. I created a calendar, a calendar blocking system that helped me really understand what was important. You know, one of the quotes I love from a book that really changed my life, uh, Essentialism, is if you don't prioritize your time, someone else will. You'll hear me say that over and over here on the podcast because I think your time is so important. So if you feel like you're in a season where maybe you have kids or you have a second job or you're caring for an elderly parent, maybe you don't feel like you quite have the time to do this, I wanna challenge you. This week, write down every 15 minutes, what are you doing with your time? And then take that, evaluate it, and change it. Because you're the one that's gonna make the change to make your dreams come true. So that is the next two steps. And I'm excited to get into next episode where we're gonna be finishing off these seven steps. If you've been getting value out of this, make sure you subscribe. And if you can't wait for the next episode to come out and you wanna know what your next step is, maybe it's to take our free YouTube class. If you haven't taken this free YouTube class, it's a one hour class that Sean Cannell, the CEO of Think Media, walks through the three secrets for winning on YouTube. He dives into why it's not too late to start on YouTube and how to break through, how to get discovered, and how to start YouTube right. If you felt lost or you felt like you don't really know how this whole YouTube thing works, we're here to help you. Think Media is put in the time and the energy. We're always testing with not just this channel, but all of our channels that we manage. And we know what works and how to help you break through. So you can go to thinkmasterclass.com if that's your next step. And what I love so much about going through this class is that we give you the opportunity to join us inside of our academy. Video Ranking Academy, like I said, was the first academy that we created, and we've now helped hundreds of people go full time doing the exact thing that we teach on this free class. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you watch that free class while it's available. It's brand new and updated and waiting for you at thinkmasterclass.com. If you have loved this podcast, I encourage you to share it with someone who needs to learn YouTube. This is again, a three-part series, and I'll bet you have someone in your life right now who is wanting to learn YouTube. So make sure that you share this podcast with them to help them go full-time as well. And if you're listening right now on iTunes, I encourage you to subscribe and you can also rate and review the podcast. It helps iTunes let other people know that this podcast is one that they should listen to. And today I'd love to read the review from Blazing Video. He says, love it, stop thinking and just subscribe. Just love how their content is so real. Found Sean Cannell on another podcast and now I've subscribed, bought their book, have their audiobook and subscribe on YouTube. Just fantastic and relevant content. Well, Blazing Video, thank you so much for being a part of our community. It means so much to us to have you rating and reviewing and, and giving your testimonies online of how this has impacted you. I think one of my favorite things is being able to read these reviews and to connect with you on social media. So if you have liked this podcast, let us know. How has it helped you? What tip was the tip that changed what you were doing? I'd love to know what was it that helped you the most. All right, in next week's episode, we're gonna finish this series off part three, and we're gonna be talking about the last three steps, finding your sweet spot, helping you decide your side income streams, and 
Knowing when to step out. You know, it sounds great to say go full-time on YouTube, but when do you actually make the jump? If you have a full-time job right now or you're ready to move into a full-time role on YouTube, when do you actually go full-time? What does that look like? And how do you actually mathematically calculate when is the right time for you to make that leap? I can't wait to see you on the next episode. And again, share this with a friend, subscribe, rate and review, and we'll see you on the next podcast.